10 features a low ceiling with 261 feet to the pin from the short tee. Nico's on the left hand side. Tim Barham up next to tee, also sitting at 27 under par. Tim's forehand shot finishes on the right. Tyler's lining up a forehand as well. And Tyler seems as if he maybe turned it over. He's going to get a skip. It's going to finish toward the pin, however, it's going to probably be 30 to 35 feet left. Johnny McRae goes straight up, looking for a little finish. Okay. However, he's going to have a putt for two. This is the 261 foot hole number 10. And Tyler makes good from just inside 30 feet. Tim is going to step off his throw, helps judge the distance and assess just how far away you are. High right chain, but in for Tim. He's going to card the birdie too. That should move him to 28 under par. And at least momentarily have the outright lead. Johnny McRae makes good from 25 feet. be it high. Nico makes good from 20 feet. And again, here on hole number 10, we have just eight shots for these four players to complete the hole. I think we'll see the same on hole number 11. Nico going straight up the middle here. 231 foot hole number 11. Trying to ring that up in one. Next to T, Tim Barnum. Tim set, setting up for a forehand shot off the T. So a very nice shot by Tim that may have carried a little bit long. However, I'm guessing he's going to be within 30 feet of the pin for sure. And Tyler going with a straight up hyzer. Johnny McRae fourth the tee. And Johnny shot carrying slightly left, however he's still going to have a putt from there. 
Plunge your tee shots on hole number 11, 231 feet. Tyler's birdie attempt is just off the top of the rim. Johnny McRae is looking at about 30 feet for his birdie. High chain and in for Johnny McRae on the birdie two. Tim will be next to putt. Tim also pacing it off. Tim actually may be a few feet further away than Johnny was. his first misfire here today. He's going to take a par 3. And Nico's birdie attempt will be from 23 feet. Nico makes good and will take the outright lead here again after the 11th hole of the round. Nico and Johnny with birdie twos, Tyler and Tim with par threes on the 231 foot hole number 11. Hole 12 measuring in at 252 feet. You must navigate the gap on that right hand side to attack the pin here. It is tucked up and on the left, a blind hyzer shot. And Johnny did get a little tree action, however, that may have carried to the pin. Tim throwing his pink Z force, and for the first time today, we're feeling a little bit of a wind out here, very light. And Tyler going out and around, however, gets hung up by the trees on the right hand side. This is hole number 12, 252 feet. And Tyler catches a branch here on his left hand side. Pacing it off at 12 steps, Nico makes good on the birdie two here on hole number 12. He's going to be happy with that. Tim is going to pace it off. Unfortunately I wasn't counting as he was walking there, but he's inside 35 feet. Nico paced off 12 steps, and Tim is certainly closer than that. However, Tim's going to have a little branch to contend with here. 
He's going with a straddle out to his left. Making good on the birdie. He's going to stay within one of Nico with a birdie two on hole number 12. Johnny McRae comes in just a bit low. However, that is good for the birdie two. We're going to have Johnny, Tim, and Nico all with birdie twos. Tyler with the par three. We're two thirds of the way complete through our fourth round. You're watching the 2014 Ledgestone Insurance Open presented by ABC Discs. Nico going with a roller here on this 603 foot par 4 number 13 and it was moving along nicely until it hit a tree on the left hand side. Good angle. Rip. Yeah, and Johnny. Johnny McCray with an awesome roller finishing out into the center of the fairway on the right hand side perfectly placed. Tim also going with a roller that's going to finish out in the open, also on the right hand side. Good angle. Tyler throwing his Z surge as a roller. Mm. And it looked like it may have hit the exact same tree as Nico's did. And of course here on hole number 13, 603 feet. Big thanks to my video blog sponsor, Legacy Discs. Tim has a forehand shot from the right side. However, that's just a bit low. Tyler playing the low right-handed skip shot with the Z force. He's going to be left with a putt from there. And Nico with a very awkward open stance throws a very nice approach. He's going to have a putt for birdie three from there. Must be the sweater. Johnny looking to come in with a hyzer. Unfortunately, he hung it a little wider than he was hoping for. Absolutely huge drive by Johnny here on this 603 foot hole. Nice shot by Tim. He's going to be looking to take a par 4 here on this 603 foot hole. Johnny makes good even after the errant approach shot, which he was very displeased with. He still makes good on the birdie three here on hole number 13. Tyler's left with 28 feet for birdie three as well. And with no problems, he'll card the three. Nico is left with Less than five feet. It's going to have a very easy three here as well. And Nico's going to extend his lead by another stroke here 
as he picks one up on Tim, who's sitting in second. There you have it, 603 foot, hole number 13. After watching the women from behind the tee yesterday here on hole number 14, give you a much better vantage point moving over here. And Nico has placed himself just 15 to 18 feet from the pin. And Johnny McRae is within five feet of the pin. Absolutely beautiful drive on this 297 foot slight turnover if you're a righty backhand thrower. Correction, a little dyslexia there, 279 foot. And Tyler hits a tree on the left hand side with his forehand. Tim has relinquished a few strokes to Nico here in the past few holes. He's going to need to get this if he wants to stay right in the hunt. Tim and Nico will certainly be moving on to the final nine, so we'll see more of them a little later this afternoon. And he's found himself deep of the pin, and he's going to have a straddle out of the rough. However, it's not going to be nearly as eco Nico's 16-footer. Tyler Horn gets the tree that's between him and the basket. That's going to leave him at least 18 feet away. He's right next to Nico. Not the attempt he was going for. And Tim makes good on the birdie two from 18 feet. Slight straddle to the right hand side. Tyler's into the center of the chains for his par three. And Nico makes good for the birdie two as well. Johnny's left with about six feet at most. And no problems for him. Three birdies and a par. Hole number 14, just four to play. And after moving to 32 under par, Nico is on the tee, coming in at hole number 15. And he's approximately 20 feet short of the pin. This is a very fast green. Everything directly behind the basket slopes downward. There's a dirt area around here, so anything that comes in is going to likely skip. And Johnny hits the edge of the dirt and skips forward to 10 feet. Tim, who is sitting two back of Nico, is next to T. As I said, he's given up a few strokes to Nico in the last three or four holes. One thing you don't want to do is give Nico a sizable lead going into the final few holes. And he's turned it over, but gets a redirect off of a tree branch and lands almost right next to Nico's shot. Tyler experiencing a little frustration on the past few holes as well. The group has somewhat pulled away from him here. 
with Johnny McRae's previous birdie that puts him just inside that final four again at the moment. And Tyler's just 10 feet away. He's looking at a birdie two here on hole number 15. Tim's putt is just a few inches low. He had a little bit of obstruction near his throwing motion. Nico makes good. That's going to give him a three-stroke advantage with just 16, 17, and 18 to play during this fourth round. They are playing a par 32 Safari final nine, however, again, you don't want to give Nico any extra strokes. Tyler makes good for the birdie two, as I expect Johnny McRae to do the same. And Johnny is in three birdies and a par here at hole number 15. Just three holes to play plus the final nine. You're watching the Disc Golf Guy video blog of the 2014 Ledgestone Insurance Open. And Nico busts out a roller here on the 492 foot hole number 15. And it had rolled all the way up the hill and then turned around, rolled down the hill, and now looks to be rolling back toward it. That action. As Nico says, all that action on a tee shot. And Johnny hits the tree on the left hand side, however it comes down favorably for him. Tyler going with an air shot and it is a beautiful one at that. Wow. Up onto the side of the hill. He's going to have an easy approach from there. Tim's seems to be turning over more than he was hoping for. It goes off and to the right and stays there. Again, hole 16, 492 feet from the short. And Johnny with a awkward stance makes good on getting up and out. He's gonna be looking to get up and down and save his four. And Tim is here on the right hand side of the fairway more of an awkward location just because it's very tough to determine how far away the pin is. Johnny's approach shot is just right of the pin as the basket is perched here on this hillside. And Nico has a standstill backhand approach up to the upper shelf here. And Tyler's shot skips up and touches the bottom of the pole, so he's going to have an easy drop in for birdie three. And Tim's putt for birdie three is good. Tim will remain three strokes behind Nico, moving into the final two holes of this 
round. left with approximately 10 feet for his par 4. No problems for Johnny of course and Nico is just two or three feet from the pin as well. And there you have it. Just two holes to play here in this 18 hole round before they move to the finals. It's hole number 16. Fourth round coverage. shot is up and out. I'm not sure that was the alley he was going for. However, it uh, is clean and on the left-hand side. Tyler to tee next after carting the birdie three on 16. Tyler catches a tree on the left-hand side. 17 measures in at 330 feet. Tim catches a tree on the right hand side and gets a kick to the right as well. There it is, Johnny. Yeah, buddy. And Johnny throwing the shot Nico was looking for. Very nice shot by Johnny McRae. Tim's backhand shot is up and on the left hand side. Tyler opts for a forehand shot which is finishing up and to the right. He is within inches of where we saw Sarah Hokum land yesterday and she threw the exact same shot. And Tim opting to throw from the inside the casual water with his forehand shot, which goes up and finishes left. Yeah. And Johnny McRae likes it. That was the most excitement I've seen out of Johnny in a while. 45 feet. Good. Johnny just took a brief look at the live scoring a few moments ago. I think he knows he needs every one of these strokes moving into the final nine if he can get there. And somehow Tyler's putt for three managed to slide out the left hand side. Nico's left with about 33 feet to the pin. himself even further here from Tim. Tim's looking at a 25 footer for 
is bogey four, he will be giving at least one stroke to Miko on this hole. If he can convert, it will be just one. And Tim somewhat unraveled here on hole number 17. He's going to take a double bogey five, giving two strokes to Nico. And Nico is going to move into the 10th to last hole with a five stroke lead. That's gonna be nearly impossible to catch. There you have it, that is hole number 17. We have one to play here in our fourth round before these players move on to the final nine. We've moved over to the absolutely gorgeous hole number 18, measuring in at 660 feet, throwing from an upper platform. This hole plays down into the opening you see in front of you and then has a uphill slant to finish off the remaining 200 feet. Considered a par four and a very solid three for any competitor. with a huge late turnover. We'll see if that's going to put him in good position. He's probably going to have an Anheuser approach shot. And Tyler looking for that late turn as well and that's going to be a gorgeous drive. That is as good of a drive as you're going to find here on hole number 18. Tyler's going to have a good look at getting up and down for a birdie three from there. Tim looking for a little flip up that's going to stay straight and finish slightly left. He'll have a look at the basket. It'll be a, a longer approach than Tyler or Nico. We're on our 18th hole during the fourth round. And Johnny going out and around. He's going to be on the edge of the woods. He's happy with that shot. And Tim's going to need every stroke here as it has gotten very tight moving into these last few holes. Tyler Horn throws up and next to the pin. He's going to have a good look at a birdie three from there. As the competitors were moving down the fairway on hole 18, we were able to check the live scoring. We see Nico LaCastro at 34 under, Matt Dollar, Tyler Horn, and Tim all at 29 under. Johnny McCray at 28, Dana Vici at 27, and Paul Uliberry at 25. So only a few remaining shots before they determine who's going to move into the final four. It is very highly contested here. Johnny's on the left hand side. We'll move over. 
He's going to need to throw this in if he's looking to get into that final four. And a very nice effort, however, just wide right for Johnny. And Tim is just short on his birdie opportunity. That may or may not secure his spot into the final nine. Johnny's going to put in for a four, which is par, and that will finish him at 28 under par. And unless something out of the ordinary happens, he's going to finish just outside the final nine. Tyler will tap in for a three, moving to 30 under par. And Nico moves to 35 under par with a five-stroke lead on second place. There's your final 18 holes before we go into the Super 9. Let's check out the action. I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and this is my video blog. I'm joined by Nico LaCastro, who, well, we'll just say you started out a little bit slow, and then you uh, you got fired up somehow or another. What, what, what was the turning point for you? I think I just started aiming a little more on my putts and making sure I was following through and giving them a chance. I felt like for the, you know, before this round, I was missing a lot of my putts and not really focused. And I started really kind of feeling my putting stroke and uh, I ended up shooting a pretty decent round. Yeah, I believe it my was best a, round of the tournament. Yeah, it was a 45 out here at Northwood Park off the short tees, which is a pretty solid round. And that is exceptionally solid considering you, you parred holes one, two, and three, which were all yeah. very, very, very makeable uh, birdies. Makeable. In fact, two and three are some of the easiest holes out here. Yeah, they were. I actually started off missing a really short putt, but I didn't let it rattle me. I, I knew that I would uh, connect and get some birdies eventually. I, I play short wooded course every day, and I felt like this was right up my alley. And I'm feeling pretty comfortable with a five-stroke lead going in the finals. I feel like my game's coming around, and I got a little cushion, but I'm not going to let in and try to give away strokes. No, of course not. Now they're saying they that pick it's up a, a few more. If I they're can. saying it's a uh, it's a modified or safari layout. It's yeah. a par 32 on the final nine holes, so it should be exciting. Uh, talk a little bit about Tim and Tyler and Johnny, your your card mates during that round. Well, I felt like we were all on pace, you know, just right next to each other the whole time, and I felt like after the first, after the front nine, I started to gain a couple more strokes. I connected on a few putts. I, I was picking up a couple strokes on the guy in second. I forget who it was. I Tim, like Tim, Tim and Tyler were, yeah. were both really close that whole match. And uh, those guys were throwing some really good shots, and Tyler was really connecting on some of those putts. He, his, his putt looks good out there. And uh, Tim, he was throwing a lot of good sidearms out there. He just had a rough finish. Yeah, he really got caught up in the last few holes, yeah. taking we a five-on-hole We were pushing back 17. and forth, it seems like, for most of the round. And, you guys were, and it was actually neck and neck. He had you for most of it, well, we'll say the first half of the round, yeah. and then you kind of connected after that. Well, there you have it. We're going to move into the final nine. We hope that you enjoyed all of the coverage. This is Nico LaCastro sitting on a five-stroke lead. We're going to move into the final nine here at the 2014 Ledgestone Insurance Open. Thanks a lot for watching, you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Terry.